Hello and welcome to the Big Fat Fintech Quiz of the Year. I'm Ali Patterson from Fintech Finance. It is day two of Fintech Connect and we're here with another six rounds, covering news stories of the second half of 2018. And we kick off the day with July, a month where we celebrate National Nude Day. To celebrate, all our panelists have stripped off their inhibition, <laughs> that's an awful joke, <laughs> to, to may take on the toughest Fintech quiz known to man. So let's meet the teams. To my right, sounding off from this end, from Tandem, we have... Paul Clark, CTO Tandem Bank. CTO of Tandem Bank. How's everything going Tandem way? Yeah, we're doing brilliantly uh, so far this year. Yeah, numbers are on the up, six financial products launched. Yeah, it's going strength to strength. I love the colours of the cards. They're ni ni nice, nice and bright. Thank you. And we also have, from Banking Circle... So, Michel Ruperel, General Manager for Banking Circle. And your CEO is... Anders Lecour, who's Anders. on the front page of... Uh, Look at that, Anders, and Anders is on there, looking like James Bond, <laughs> which uh, I put that on the floor there. And also from 11th... <laughs> Ross Gallagher, delivery lead 11FS. And you're the guy behind Pulse? Uh, yeah, so our, uh, our Pulse platform, we've got um, a lot going on. It's been an incredibly exciting time for 11FS. We've launched um, Metal in partnership with uh, RBS. We've uh, announced the uh, launch of our core banking platform in partnership with DNB. So it's been a really, really good time. I'm on the waiting list for Metal, but I haven't heard anything back from them. Do you can put, put, put a word in? I can only apologise. Anything for you, Ali, of course. <laughs> Excellent. And to my left from Sabio, we have... Stuart Dorman from Sabio. Hello, everyone. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer. Chief Innovation Officer? I, yes. We get this a lot. What does that actually mean? Uh, innovating. 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 Yeah, look at, looking at how the market's developing and trying to make sure that we have uh, our R&D and our partners we work with are pushing the boundaries when it comes to tips. Are you the only person that's allowed to be innovative? Uh, no, no. There's a few others as well. But they need your, they, they need your permission. <laughs> they, have to, they have to have my permission, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And from Zwipe, we have the one and only. Yeah, my name's Otto. I'm uh, with Zwipe, uh, doing marketing at Zwipe. Uh, it's, uh, we're a biometric technology company with a, a lot of exciting things happening this year. We're piloting live uh, biometric show, show payment the card. cards. Show, show the card. I know, yeah. We know you've got it on you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool card. So it's, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's, uh, it's basically your next bank card is going to have a biometric on it. <laughs> you can take it. You can't use it. So it's fine. <laughs> And we also have from Deloitte, and I don't think we've ever actually met face to face. There you go. Look at that. Nice to see you. Good to see, good to see you, man. <laughs> For the uh, DIY expert on Twitter. Uh, if you ever need any DIY tips, Nigel here is uh, do it. straight on Twitter. So, what, what do you do at Deloitte? I have no idea sometimes. No, actually, I'm kidding. I'm a partner at Deloitte. I lead the InsureTech for the firm globally, co host of the 11FS InsureTech Insiders podcast. Uh, go listen out, give us lots of uh, recommendations on iTunes, all good. Uh, but more importantly, I spend my time with insurtechs and insurance incumbents, helping them work out what disruption in the market means, what innovation in the market means, and so much more. Brilliant, excellent. And team names, you've got to come up with a team name. Uh, team Winners. Yeah, it kind of says great, what it is. Great name. Yeah. It does what it says team on the team, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah well, I'm yeah. not. So we're going to be tired of winning. We're winning so much. <laughs> <laughs> winners, but that's it. Bigly winners. Yes, bigly. Bigly winners. Big, bigger winners. Right, so we have right. team winners, Team bigger big, winners. Big, big, bigly winners. All right, so on with the show. Straight into the news that fintech investment across the world reached record levels over the last six months, taking in fi over 57 billion across 875 deals. This was an increase of 34.2% compared to the whole of 2017. But with a recorded 38 billion overall, what percentage of this was because of the UK? 28% or 38%? What do we think? 28%. 28%? Yeah. 28%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's too big. Seems a lot more reasonable. Yeah. I don't know. I think 28. You think so? I think it's, I think it's lower than we think. Right. Yeah. Could be wrong. Yeah, I think it's 28 okay. as well. Yeah. Something very big happened in July that made this quite a factor, just to give a, a little clue. Oh, uh, was it um, Monzo getting, Monzo's 20 million. getting a billion dollar valuation? Yeah. I still think 28. Uh, it's not a big difference. So I mean, let's use Google. <laughs> 28? 28? I'd be surprised if it's over a third. Yeah, because you've got the Europe and the US as well. Yeah. And I know we're more than Europe and the US, but... We've got answers, team winners. We're yes. going to go with uh, 28%. Yes. 28%. Team, uh, are you doing a little, little calculation? <laughs> I was just trying to calculate it. We're going to go for 28, right? 28, yeah, 28. 28. Yeah, yeah. You are correct. It is 28%. Okay. Get well in. Done. Well done. Get well in. Get in. Bonus point. Well in. What made up the lion's share of this, of this, of this deal? Guardian and tech Investments. 
one very large investment worth 12.9 billion. 12.9? 12.9 billion? It's 170. Could have been the soft bank move. No, it's too small. Uh, was it the Vantiv deal? It was, yeah. it was. Vantiv uh, acquired WorldPay for 12.9 billion in July. That's, uh, so yeah, extra point to winners. Woo, winners. Winners there begin. We are. <laughs> how, how do we feel about the UK's position? Because we're, this is being recorded the day after Hanukkah, 6th of December, and we're mid-debate for Brexit. How are we feeling about the UK's position in fintech? Are we... I, 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 think, I think we're doing strong. You know, when you compare us to places where you think they would be ahead of the curve, places like Hong Kong, we've just got investment, we're launching Hong Kong. One of the reasons there is they're massively behind the curve. So looking around, Europe's pretty, pretty, doing pretty well. America, they have really tough banking regulation, banking market. I think we're doing really well in the UK. I think tech in the UK for a good number of years now has been a fintech story. Um, I think FCA is like the gold standard from a regulatory perspective. And actually, we, we saw it in the fallout from 2008. I think those tough economic and market conditions breed opportunity for people that are willing to go for it. So, um, and that's typically, the set. yeah. <laughs> so Brexit, I drew, is that a Brexit metaphor? Yeah, or? yeah, dramatic impact, I like that. I think we did a bunch of research on this as well recently, and we found whilst the number of companies being invested in has gone down, the investment numbers are still staying solid. So people are investing more in D or C, D and E rounds. As yeah, we're seeing C. later stage. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think, I don't think we should ignore the fact that we've also got a really strong talent pool in the UK. Like there is a real attitude and a real view that, you know, we can actually do something from an entrepreneurial perspective, which I think is quite prevalent in the fintech space. Right, guys, take a look at the screen. Four companies on there. What do they all have in common? Can you write your answers down? I think that's always the um, point of sale, people, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Hyperwallet must be e-money. Isn't it? Are they all been acquired by PayPal? I think so. Yeah, I think, let's go with that. I mean, I, I know I said, let's go through I'll take your word for it. If you want, you want to write it? It's all been acquired. Did you say payments? Payment tools? Sophie uh, Winwood, who unfortunately can't join us, was uh, hit on by somebody claiming to be the CEO of iZettle. It wasn't the CEO of iZettle. <laughs> it, it was someone who just thought, I'm, I'm going to play this card. Yeah. Oh. Slightly darker side of FinTech. Yeah. Are, are you, team winners, are you ready? Payments providers? What do you reckon? It seems too easy, but I've no idea. They're all right payments now. companies. Right now. <laughs> no cheating, Ross. What? Hang on. So should I just write payments? <laughs> Calling my character into question. Where's the, you got a pen? Have you all got answers? Well, right, I'm going to go for team bigger winners first. They've all been acquired by PayPal. Uh, Bingo. Correct. And you guys? Uh, we had alternative payments. Pass. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. I'm getting yes. yes. two, two bonus solid. points. Is that two bonus points because they didn't answer? No, it's a point. I can recommend you guys listen to the 11FS podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're a FinTech insider, anyone? There is a technicality, though, by the way, because PayPal actually I, I invested agree. in people. It's own. not quite they finished was, just yeah. yet. <laughs> They may all be acquired by PayPal. Semantics, it's all semantics. You deserve two points, I think. <laughs> the correct answer is PayPal. In July, PayPal invested $50 million into PPRO. Between May and July, it acquired iZettle for $2.2 billion to expand its mobile point of sale opportunities. Uh, AI-based CRM specialist JetLaw, AI-based fraud and risk management firm Simile for $120 million, and Gig Economy HyperWallet for $400 million. Moving on to the banking round, and challenger banks are constantly pushing the envelope to earn their share of the marketplace. Do, do, does Tandem feel like you do this? Do you? Oh yeah, do, yeah. Do you, yeah. Oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it, this is this, the number one problem we have is customer acquisition. So you're constantly out there doing stuff like this to get your name out there. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, genuine question as well, because yeah. There's a lot of new challenges out there, Monzo, Starling. Do you feel like you compete with like Monzo and Starling or are you more trying to take it away so from we the don't, boys? So we don't look at it as a competition so much as the banking market in the UK is worth 50 billion. Um, you know, if you've got 1% of that, you're doing really well. Monzo have got a million customers, that's fantastic. Starling have got north of 350,000. What we're actually doing is creating an environment where people are more open to the idea of a challenger bank. 
And the more people that are open to the idea of a challenger bank, the more customers you'll have. So we don't see them as competitors, we see them as breaking the ground for us. Also, Monzo and Starling have a different business model to us. They're a better current account, the world needs a better current account, they're doing a fantastic job, I use Monzo. Uh, we're doing kind of credit and savings. Uh, we may do a current account at some point in the future, but slightly different business models. But what we want is lots of customers who want to bank with the challenger bank. So I don't see them as competitors. Brilliant, excellent. Well, it's the big banks I see the as big competitors. Banks. <laughs> with that in mind, what did Starling Bank do in July to stand out from the crowds? So, do you want to write your um, answers I think down? I they, Is it shut down the community or? They did a portrait card. So they, instead of. Okay, yeah. they, they provide the um, bank as a plat, bank yeah. as a service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're doing faster payments integration. They're providing that to RBS. That, that was July, but this was. But someone else has got that already. Uh, I think they were the one of the first to do no, it. No, they're not the first. I think the N26 went first. Happened of the faster payment scheme. And so they've actually now. It's either RBS or NatWest or somewhere like that. Um, wow. But yeah, that's unbelievable. Do that. You know we're right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we'll show this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that side. <laughs> That'll be it, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> July. Team, uh, team winners, head. are you ready? Ah, oh, there's so many things there's we so can do. Yeah, 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 so many yeah. things. Okay, it's we'll socks. pick one. It's socks. The answer is they stood out with socks. You have a good pair of those socks. I have a good pair of those we socks. Think, we think, given the my, frivolous uh, nature of this competition, we know the answer. Do you? Yes. My, <laughs> my, my, my video, when I, was on, when I got my socks yeah, out, yeah, yeah. it had like 20,000 views. I was like, what? Hashtag game I mean, this is real yeah. innovation. Right, I'm going to for team winners. What did Starling Bank do in July? So we've got two things. What's Both the answer? Them? Well, uh, go for the frivolous can we, can one. Can we get a point the for frivolous each? one. We'll go frivolous. Okay, okay. So they changed their design on their card from horizontal to vertical. They did, indeed. That is a point. That is the answer I'm looking for. But if you've got a, what's, what's the other thing? Because I don't know. They also thing. provided FPS integration for one of the incumbent banks. I think RBS. They've taken over their FPS integration. I'm not sure that was in July. That's a big thing. The card, not so big. Okay, okay, and <laughs> we, we want extra there. points for actually having one. Woo! Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Here it is, come on, Ross, where's yours? I mean, I'm just that really glad, I'm just really bank glad that them. the number's now on the back. <laughs> I know, exactly. Yeah. So I'm holding it this way for a reason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Question about cards as a whole. Um, why have banks stopped putting the sort code and account number on the card? Why have they stopped putting yeah, the account number and the sort code on the card? Y you look for your account number, it's not on. More importantly, why do you even have them? It's all on here. Do you know only 7% of the population actually uses... Um, I'm one of that 7% of all oh, the You're a finance geek. There's a bunch of finance <laughs> geeks that moan about this shit all the time, but actually 93% of the population don't use it. So why would we build but a feature that only 7% of people the are going to use? 7% that are want it. Speak to the CTO. <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Stu, with a kind of customer experience, on, do, you, do you bank with any of the challenges? Uh, I do actually. I signed up to, to Monzo, and we see Atom making a lot of noise in this space at the moment. So they, they are um, seem to be kind of promoting themselves in a lot of awards, a lot of customer experience awards. They've won quite a few, so they're really active in that space right now. Because is um, there was a point, and Lewis on my team who is not here, I know he has used his Monzo card as a chat up line, like actively. Right. Is, is that still a thing? Is it still, you know, is, is, is a new card still? I, know, I mean, I know. I, no, 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 golden <laughs> tickets. I golden tickets, I use those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. talk to me and I'll give you a golden yeah. ticket. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it, one of, the, one of the really clever things that Monzo did was they noticed, or they realized that the, the, the physical card was a sort of key customer touch point. Like that's when you, it, that's when you interact with your, your provider's brand when you take the card out. And they made it, they made customers feel good about using this like interesting card to pay for things and it also I think a byproduct started a conversation people were like what have you got how do I get one and in that instance it pushes their cost of acquisition to zero but it changed the definition of status you go back to the 80s I'm old enough to almost remember it, where you go or the 90s you go you wanted a gold card or a silver card or a platinum yeah, card or yeah, yeah. a black card yeah. and now you get a black card from anyone it's, no, it's, it's, it's beta now you want, you want to have a card actually that, that's there. technically not quite true you can't have a completely black card so our tandem co-founder card which I've got is black, but it's got an orange edge around it because you have you can only have you can't have 100% black. Uh, we're under Mastercard. You can have 99% black, but not 100% black. If you go to Centurion or something like that, or you go to Quintessential, a whole different league completely. Then they are truly either all metal or all titanium. So it's, wow. And on, then on the subject, I was going to say on the subject because I know you guys at Banking Circle do a lot of work with Revolut, uh, and they have just brought out the the metal cards. What what's the thoughts on sort of metal cards? Is that something that's so from our perspective, we provide an infrastructure. So many of the um, 
financial tech companies that we bank, we provide them with the accounts, the foreign exchange, the payment services. We don't directly get involved with issuing the cards. That's normally done by the fintech provider that we work with. Well, that's, but what do you think about the actual card itself? Like, would you, do would I you, like a metal yeah, card? Like a metal I mean, card. normally the, they're probably a bit more weightier on the wallet. Do I really want to have that in my wallet? Probably not. Um, I'm pretty indifferent to me. A card is a card. It's a method of making a payment. Whether I'm going to use my phone or my card, I'm probably part of the population that's quite indifferent as to whether what the actual material is made of. My favourite piece ever was a sign in Manchester Piccadilly Station that said, on the train ticket machine, do not use metal cards. Really? Because they don't go through the machines. But it's like the old egg cards with the corner cut off and then they wouldn't come back out of the ATMs. <laughs> was it egg or mint cards as well? well yeah, had, yeah, yeah. The old mint cards that had problems, a... We're designing right? Yeah. yeah. The new card has been designed to reflect the way people are using their cards today, slotting them into ATMs and card machines or making contactless payments in a vertical or portrait orientation. And it seems with the competition and various glitches, consumers love a good switch up. So let's play a quick round of Play Your Debit Cards Right. I'm going to tell you how many people switched away from a current account and you have to work out if the next bank's switch rate was higher or lower. This is the cash survey, right? Okay. <laughs> right. This is going to be fun. These figures are for the first quarter of 2018. Bank of Scotland had a net gain of 24 customers. 24? Now, is that higher or lower? Write it down. Don't give it away. Poker faces. 24. Is Barclays higher or lower than Bank of Scotland? I would say lower. Oh, it's got to be higher. You think? Mind you, you're always saying people are leaving Barclays, so is the lower people. So did RBS get more customers or no? Yeah, they might be on a negative. Yeah, I would have thought so as well. I agree. Shite. Yeah. Um. Next up, Danske Bank, higher or lower than Barclays? Lower. Danske Bank. L lower. So, so I'm just waiting. Barclays, we, we think Barclays will be lower. But Danske Bank had this huge problem with uh, the fraud case where they it's were. In, uh, uh, okay. So I would, I would assume yeah. that it's. So, but the, you're Danish. I'm. I'm. Uh, no, we're. I'm. We're based in Norway. So okay. Yeah, so we know that. So, so if it goes. This, this is for the UK. This is the UK. Yeah. Uh, oh, for the, in the UK. In so the UK, yeah. yeah. They're. They're. they're you're based in the current account switching service, aren't you? Oh well, no, cause, cause I know you're based in Norway, so. Yeah, but the the, the their current account in the UK. Yeah. Oh, then I have no idea. There. Are you more likely to switch to Danske than away from Danske? Next one is HSBC, which I discovered this year stands for Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation. I no, no, it stands for How Simple Became Complicated. Oh, if you okay. ask anybody that works there, they'll tell you it's How Simple Became Complicated. <laughs> they said that recently, actually, on one of the podcasts. Interesting. But it's switching, right? So yeah, HSBC is a very popular brand. Yeah, I mean, they have okay. so much advertisement and you know on TV. What, and Next up is RBS Group, which also includes NatWest. I have no clue. You reckon Are you ready for the next one? Next up, TSB. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's not get too distracted because that um, these are for first quarter 2018. And finally, one more, Starling. Higher than TSP, right? Yeah. Oh, mind you, I think. That, yeah. Oh, I remember reading this. I remember reading this report. But this is the gain, isn't it? And I mean, Starling's already higher as well. Misha's got a serious look on his face. We're taking we got this to win. incredibly seriously. Yeah. What we say? RBS is lower than what? Uh, RBS is lower than HSBC. Are we saying that this is lower than the the base case, or is it lower than the previous one? I'm oh, saying yeah. it's right. lower than it's the base case. It's, it's from the previous bank. From the previous Ooh. bank. Okay. Oh, oh, right, previous. that changes everything. Oh, okay. Okay, so... Bar Barclays were lower than RBS. Right, yes. bigger winners, are you ready? Always ready. Yeah. Winners, are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Darling high end. Of course we are, we're winners. <laughs> right. Barclays had a net loss of 17,600 customers, so lower. Yep. Woo. Lower? Yeah. Yep. You put lower? We had higher. You put higher. Ah, oh, point to winners. Danske Bank had a net loss of 294, which means it is higher than Barclays. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we. <laughs> we're, we're good, we're good now, we're good. You put higher? Lower. We had lower. lower. Yeah. Uh, is that, did you put lower as well? We put yeah. lower as well. HSBC had a net gain of 20,885. Yeah, but they're offering money to switch. That's, that's a great idea. It's all, it's, all, it's all of the numbers over there. <laughs> Higher? Higher. Higher. Yes. Higher. RBS had a loss of 11,000, so lower yep. than RBS. Yeah. 
TSB had a net loss of 5,000, which is higher than RBS. Woo! Wait, do you think that's nuts? Yeah, I, thought, yeah. I thought they lost like millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And lastly, Starling had a net gain of 1,153, which is higher. Yeah. So there's a point there and a point there. Yeah. Excellent. Boom. But what it goes to show is people are really sticky. It doesn't matter how bad a service you give your customers, people are really sticky. And people will go from one crap bank to the next crap bank. Well, if they pay you, if they pay you. Yeah. But also, people are vaguely comfortable with being multi-banked. They don't feel the need to switch. But you, you equally look at the challenges. They've also had some of their issues um, over the years. They've always had outages with payment providers or whatever else. So it's, it's not all plain sailing out there for anyone, right? Yeah. On a, on a day that we sit here with the entire, uh, what are the second largest network in the UK for mobile phones being out. Has anybody ever closed a bank account? Yeah. Yes. A, a current account? Yes. No. I've closed. See, that, that's interesting. I, I, I personally never You're closed the current account. You're not old enough to open accounts. one yet, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, my, my wife tried to close her. What did HSV stand for again? How Simple Became Complicated. Tried to close her How Simple Became Complicated bank, but couldn't because her signature from when she was 12 didn't match what her signature is now. How Simple Became Complicated. Exactly. It exactly. is ridiculous. It's a shame because they could do some really, and they are trying some really cool things, but I kind of want to see that. It's very slow. It's bring very bring slow. back the Midlands, that's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> Give it time. Yeah. And finally, in which US state this July, we saw the first official trial of a driverless vehicles launch as part of a six month test? I think I know the answer to this. There's a massive retirement community village in Florida. Yeah. Well, where the Uber car killed oh, someone. Oh, 11FS yeah, is falling minutes. apart. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No reaction. I think. I was only reading about it yesterday. Are you one of the state or city? I wanted the state. Okay. Do you want the provider of it as well? Do you know much about driverless cars? Oh, no. Yeah, I do actually. Funny, that's, is that the point Funny, for the win? Insurance and driverless point. cars. That's the bonus point for the win. What? No, surely not. We're just going to just take out the entire insurance industry. Yeah, I think that's going to be uh, d d disruptive much. Yes. Oh, kind of oncoming traffic. It's yeah. in a close community. It's like the perfect place. Um, you've been in a driverless car, I take it? Yes. Well, how did you find it? Interesting. Nerve wracking. Where, where, did, you, where did you do it? Yeah, in one? the US. You can get any guys here, but you can the US. Yeah, most of the shows you go to now will have an experience in driverless cars and stuff like that. So, because I, I took one in Vegas and it was a, a lift and it, and it said do you, do you, there was an option on there to choose a driverless car, and that was kind of like, wow, this is the future. We're just not used to it. If, if you took out the steering wheel and the fact that someone was sitting there and turned the seats round, as many of the cars are doing now, then you don't have the fear that actually someone should be in that seat because that's the way you've always known it. Well, they had a driver there who just had to say, right, we're going driverless now, and he let go of his hands. Were you in the back or the front? We were in the back. We weren't allowed to film it though, they said no filming. Yeah, well, they're starting an autonomous bus uh, system in Norway in Oslo uh, in February, where they're doing a route from like the downtown to this uh, hill. And it's, you know, and they're allowing passengers to get on and they're doing a, it's a trial run through a Danish company. Well, we, 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 we will, we will trial driverless cars in London before Christmas this year. Amazing. It was announced last week, week before last. We better. That'd be amazing. I can't wait. I'm, uh, I'm so involved with driverless cars, my wife is 100% not. Jeez. Think about elderly, think about young kids, think about traffic. It's an amazing, all the traffic lights will disappear over the years. But it's not any of that sort of stuff anymore. Yeah, but do you, you gotta get think, rid of the drivers first. Do you think it will make uh, railways obsolete? No. I, I came here on an autonomous train this morning, actually. It was pretty amazing. Dealer? Yeah. There you go. There we are. Stuck to, tra stuck to tracks, though, right? should do, do this, do that. They don't want to kind of Make sit in the real time. Team winners. Yeah. Do yes. you have an answer? We do. We have the right answer. Have the right answer. Bigger winners, do you have the answer? We do. We do. Have yeah. you written it down? No. Should we write it down? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go with winners first. Now, this, this is the thing is, if, if you get this wrong and they get it right, then it'll be a tiebreaker. Ooh. Let's try and avoid that. Okay. So we're going to go with Florida. Florida. Arizona. Arizona. Ooh. Ooh. Yay! Go on. <laughs> no. Nige, what's happened? What can I say? It's an insurance question. I had to get it right. But why would you, but why would you say Florida? There's a big retirement community in Florida um, and it's kind of pretty much self-enclosed and everybody's a bit doddery and they want to get from their villa to the golf course and their golf course to the bar and then back again. And they are running driverless cars in that community at the moment. But it must be the second one, not the first. Drive, driverless hospital beds to go from one to the other. Yeah. <laughs> or, or there may just be people falling asleep at the wheel or maybe dying as they're driving along. And... Walmart shoppers in Phoenix metropolitan area can order groceries on walmart.com 
and as their order is being prepared at the store, self-driving cars will transport them to the store and bring them back, Waymo said. Who's Waymo? Google's alphabet self-driving car. Oh yeah, car. which means it's a tiebreaker. If you both get it right, we'll go for a second tiebreaker. Fight. Which celebrity endorsed Lydian coin? Is it the yeah. Dennis Hoffman, the, the basketball player? The basketball player, yeah. Uh, uh, Dennis, Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Um, or, yeah, I, I, um, I, 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 or there's, there's a few others as well. Um, was it, not, uh, not JC. Um, on his Insta feed, he was kind of pumping it and he didn't say that he was an influencer for it. Because the one that the, one that the other one did was more marijuana based. You got the answer? You got the answer? You got an answer? <laughs> 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 Just mumble it. <laughs> <laughs> and then look away. <laughs> Winners, have you, do you have an answer? It's a basketball player. We're quite confident. A, a, a basketball player? Definitely a basketball player. Uh, have you written it down? We've got uh, we two. Find. We've got two as well, to be fair. Okay. It's, it's not the first one, though. I've got the first one wrong. Uh, Shaq? Yeah, Shaq. Do you get two chances if we both get wrong? Yes. All right, okay. Right. Shaq O'Neal or Dennis Rodman? Neither of those are right, I'm afraid, oh. I'm afraid. 50 Cent? No. Paris Hilton? It is Paris Hilton. Yes! yes. Got <laughs> what? <laughs> we were winners, but you were bigger winners. Way! <laughs> Excellent, thank you very much, guys. Just tell us where to find you and which celebrity would endorse your company? Um, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. <laughs> Warren Buffett. <laughs> where, where, where can we find more about Tandem? Uh, go to the website, tandemco.uk. Brilliant, excellent, excellent. James Bond. James Bond, I like that. And wh where can we find out more about Banking Circle? Uh, website, LinkedIn, yeah, or just get in touch. And 11FS? Who, who, who would be the uh, celebrity? Oh, uh, well, I, I guess since we had him on um, the FinTech Insider podcast quite recently, I'm going to go with um, Will I Am. Only pipping Nigel Walsh, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, I'll take Will I Am. Lady was very yeah, lucky. Yeah, we were yeah, very yeah, jealous. Yeah. We were all very jealous, yeah. trust me. <laughs> Find out more on? Um, yeah, 11fs.com, uh, at 11fs team on Twitter. We're everywhere. F um, FinTech Insiders. Brilliant, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Where can we find out more about Deloitte? Uh, Deloitte.co.uk or find me on Twitter at Nigel Walsh. Is it a big company, Deloitte? It's a reasonable size company, yes. Oh, okay, good. We're about 350,000 people now. Uh, who would the celeb be? Ooh, hard to name just one. Gun to head. Is that your answer? <laughs> it will come to me. It <laughs> will come to you. And how about Zwipe? Where can we find out more about you guys? Uh, Zwipe.com. Uh, follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn. And uh, for us, a combination of Paris Hilton and 50 Cent. Could be an ideal That's okay. uh, yeah. celebrity endorsement pairing. Is that like their love child? <laughs> Potentially, yes. <laughs> I like that. And, and Savio? Uh, Savio.co.uk or me on Twitter, Stuart uh, underscore Dorman. And your celeb? Celeb. It's got to be Elon Musk for me. Yeah. I love what he's doing at the moment. So you missed out on Elon. You could have had Elon Musk. There we go. There we go. Cool. Thank you very much for that, everyone. A little round of applause for our panellists.